Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Administrator uh, Bouvet, thank you for appearing today. When did the EPA first learn of the high level lead levels in Flint's water? Uh, I think there were indications in the spring of 2015 uh, with the testing of Ms. Walter's house and some neighboring houses that very high lead levels were being found there. Now, I understand the, the, the concept, uh, you know, I deal a lot with water, that um, EPA, the uh, environmental quality, um, but it's set up as a checks and balances. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Beauvais? EPA has an oversight responsibility. You Would you agree, Mr. Edwards? Yes, I do. Yeah, so, so if something fails, there's another line of, uh, that should, should come about. So I'm going to go along this line with the EPA. Um, when did EPA Administrator McCarthy first visit Flint about this crisis? Uh, I believe that yesterday was Administrator McCarthy's first visit to Flint. It wasn't until yesterday that she visited for the first time. Hmm. So the day before this hearing. So Administ Administrator McCarthy knew about this crisis for eight months but didn't visit Flint till the day before a congressional hearing. Uh, I don't believe that Administrator McCarthy knew about the crisis for eight months. Really? Something dynamic as this, and you didn't relay that up the chain? Uh, well, I came into this job in November of 2015, so I don't have personal knowledge of all oh, well, the well, communications well, that were done. What's, what's today? Today it's is It's February, February 2016, right? To me, when you prioritize, and I'm, by the way, I'm a healthcare provider, I'm a dentist, you, you triage things like this. This is something that is a dynamic tragedy because it's, it's an ongoing problem. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. So wouldn't you put the highest priority on that application to figure out how and what went wrong and, and accept some of the blame and, and try to go forward? Would you not? This absolutely is our highest priority. I would, I would well, it sure doesn't show it to me because if she knew in November, it's February before she shows up in Flint, the EPA has been intensively engaged yeah. in this situation. No, since it's, well it's before the same November. old thing. You got to remember that this is the same EPA that knew about what was going to happen in a mine blowout in Colorado and now has a lot of people all the way down from Colorado, Utah, California, and Arizona all at risk because of some of their actions. So, yes, everybody desires or should take some of the blame, but some of that blame goes to the EPA and it goes to the head honcho. Just like for me, example, in me, in my office, somebody comes into my office and something goes wrong. I'm accountable for that. I find it despicable that the, the Gina McCarthy, the administrator, shows up in Flint yesterday instead of going there immediately. Particularly when we see the outrage from, from the other side and from the people in this audience in regards to children and the lead poisoning that occurs. That's just despicable. Administrator Bouvet and an EPA employee, Susan Hedman, tried to discuss a series of this memo in emails in July 2015 by saying it was a draft, stating the memo should have never been released and stating that the memo never had final approval from the EPA hierarchy. Hedman has since resigned, correct? Yes, Dr. Hedman has resigned. Why'd she resign? My understanding is that she resigned in order to make sure that the region and EPA could be fully focused on our response in Flint. Why wasn't she fired? I can't answer that question. I, she stepped aside in order to make sure that we could focus all of our attention. Make, on make sure response. that the administrator has that, an, that question because we're going to ask that when the administrator's here. Why wasn't she fired? The initial memo was sent in June 24th. Ms. Hedman promised a final memo. Was a final memo ever released? I believe that the final memo was released in October. No, November. November. Thank November. You. Was it a comprehensive uh, uh, memo that, that details the chronicness and dynamic aspect of this tragedy? This particular memo that uh, Mr. Del Toro uh, did was focused on the testing of lead at Ms. Mrs. Walter's house and the neighboring homes. But this memo, I understand, is not even nearly the comprehensive aspect that was, would you consider it a shell of a, a release? The memo was focused on the specific testing that was done at Mrs. Walter's house in the neighboring homes and was a comprehensive look at that situation. It is not the entirety of EPA's review of the situation. Director Cree, I, I appreciate your testimony today, and you are one person today that has accepted responsibility. And your governor has, governor has previously done the same through this crisis, even though uh, there's fault all the way across. That is commendable. Do you believe this incident could have occurred, would have occurred had the Flint City Council not voted to change its water source? I 
I think this incident occurred because of the lack of orthophosphate being added. No, but if you never made the change, you would have never had this cat catastrophic event, right? That's a true statement. Hmm. What would have happened if the city would have followed the directions of its water utility consultant? Uh, there were a couple of different um, consultants, and it would have minimized the problem. And what would have happened if the city would have followed the corrosive, uh, the proper corrosive treatment? As Dr. Edwards stated, we would not have had this problem. So a series of checks and balances, everybody pointing the finger, and nobody wanting to take the blame except for yourself and the governor. I find that very humblingly bad that the government is, is, is not being part of the solution here. So I, with that, I yield back. Thank the gentleman now recognize.